guys and welcome to the first of my tutorials for the Windows 8 Metro. Um, this is going to be me showing you how to use Visual Studio um, Professional 2013 to build um, Windows 8 Metro applications which is the Windows Store. So you're going to have to make sure that you get hold of the uh, the correct like SDKs for this. You're going to need the development kit which is all available from the Microsoft website. So the first thing that we're going to do once you've installed these tools and you've got your Visual Studio working is we're going to make a new project. Now we're going to choose Windows Store and I'm going to call it My Metro App. So I'm going to keep it as a blank app because this way I can easily explain from the, from the start where, where you're going to be uh, working, what kind of things we'll be doing. And to be honest, I find that when learning something new, it's easier to learn it from a, like, from a completely clean slate so that you then know exactly where you stand, you don't have any unnecessary things. Sorry, that was my text tone. Um, so what I'm going to, oh yeah, by the way, with these videos I don't tend to do them more than once, I just do them casually and just kind of make them a little more or less intense by way of like, I don't know, I, I don't like a video where I'm watching it and I fall asleep. Anyway, enough uh, driveling there. What I'm going to say is, um, it, this is where you'll, you'll uh, be brought to, well initially you will arrive at this page here. Um, you don't really want to look at this right now, you want to just go ahead and double click on your main page and this will bring you up the designer. Uh, the designer for this is, in my opinion, a bit more of a pain in the butt than the Windows Phone stuff because obviously you're working with a larger screen so you just have to get used to not having as much room or as not being as zoomed in as much to deal with everything. And another thing I find is when you're using tools on here, you drag a tool into Windows Phone and you kind of know where you stand with the size of it, but because of the resolution differences in Windows 8, um, like the Metro apps, you're going to find that your text but uh, text boxes, buttons and things like that are going to look weird when you first put them down and you really have to play around to get it how you want it. So to start off with, all I'm going to say is this is kind of the new design. This is the, the designer, it's similar to the Windows Phone one. Um, we're actually going to be using the C Sharp and XAML. So that's kind of what we'll be using the program. In my opinion, it's the best one to use. It's nice and clean, it's quick, it's efficient, and plus I just love C Sharp. So, and you should all enjoy C Sharp too. It's, it's a nice language. Um, as usual, we've got all the tools down the left-hand side. If you don't have the tools here, then play around with your windows or go to your tools bar. I'm sure there's something around here. I can't remember where it is, but you'll get your toolbox when you want it. Or sometimes you'll find that if it isn't pinned, it's actually on the left-hand side here where it says toolbox. You just bring it out, I pin mine in, and I never lose it, unless I close it, which is quite regular actually. Um, anyway, here you've got all the usual stuff. You've got the buttons, you've got your, your grid views, images, uh, text box, text blocks, you're fine. You got it's, it's very similar to Windows Phone if you've ever experienced that and some other things. So um, in this initial one, what we're showing you quickly is if you go into your XAML file and you view the code, um, again, similar to all the other things with C Sharp, you're going to have um, your usual kind of layout and all your different stuff. The only thing that's slightly different between Windows Phone and this is this has got this dot initialize component and not just initialize components. So it's, it's not really anything to worry about, especially not at this stage. We're working on getting used to um, the environment and seeing what's slightly different and all kinds of things like that. Um, for those of you who are following these and haven't been in the Windows Phone tutorials, I will actually now quickly just run through variables. So variables are quite simply things like a string, which will be my string. We've got integers, which is I'm going to call my int. Then we've got um, the bool or the booleans, so I'm going to call it my bool. Um, what else? Uh, that we'll actually be using. Hmm, I can't see us using anything else. Oh, maybe a double value. So just to run you through what these actually are. Um, these are the different variables that we'll be uh, encountering. The string, that's something that can take any sort of letter, number, special characters or anything. Um, with these integers, when you're uh, initializing them, if you put them away from the actual uh, the actual little like function areas and you keep it right up the top, this is where we kind of initialize this kind of string that's going to be used throughout the application. If we had uh, an, a little function and we used a string inside it, you probably wouldn't be able to use that string outside of it unless it was made public. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. If you're going to be using these strings and variables throughout, keep them at the top. Now, first thing you can do is this is how you would actually um, set a string and set a value to it. What you can see is use the speech marks. That kind of declares the, 
what you're going to be saying. If you don't have these speech marks in, you're going to cause havoc. Um, it won't know your ending, and yeah, same old. Uh, semicolon on the end to end the line, and it's as simple as that. The same with integers. You just use the equals and you put a number in. The booleans, these can be true and they can also be false. So it's, and if you don't want it to have a value at all to start with, you can just leave it like this. But if you have it like this when you first start your application and then you run a function saying, is it true or is it false? You might find that you get some errors because it's neither. Well, there's no, there's nothing assigned to it. It's, it's unassigned. And the same with a string. If you don't put anything in your string when you first make it and then you try and produce the string, you're not going to get a lot. You're going to have trouble. So. It's, it's good to set some sort of value, even if you're just going to do something like this, you know, you want your string to, to have something to it, otherwise it's not really been initialized correctly. So anyway, and the doubles, the double can be um, a number with a, a decimal in it. That's the idea of these. The doubles um, are made for decimal values. So you'll find a lot of things when they ask you to use double, they ask you to use integer. You do have to follow what they say. I mean, the canvassing stuff, that's double. Integers, typically you can get away with integer, uh, integer values are uh, using things like um, arrays when you're running an array list. Um, that's another thing that we'll go into at a later date. But anyway, this was just the initial thing, getting used to the environment. Um, if you want to go ahead and, you know, just play around with it, just grab some things like, I don't know, grab a text box, drag that over in there and kind of extend it. You look down in the bottom right hand corner and go through the properties. You've got your usual name uh, to set the element a name. You've got under common the same areas of text so that you can change what it's initially saying. You have all of your um, event handlers under the little lightning strike here, uh, which is similar to most other things. Um, and again, just play around. You've got the brush stuff here. You can change its background, its border brush, its foreground, and it's highlighting when, it's, when you select on the text. Um, it's worth just messing around, see what you can do. Play with the text, set the sizes, use the layout. Um, one thing I will be going over in later uh, videos is how to lay out your application properly because where the uh, Windows 8 tablets range in such a bit, like got such a variety, sorry, you'll find that one resolution is absolutely tiny compared to some of the stuff. I mean, one of mine's like 1920. So if you get something like that, that's actually like from 1366, you're going to have trouble. I've, I've been there in the past, I've built applications and then I've gone to run it on my, uh, my Acer tablet and I've run it on my mains machine here and it's just havoc absolute havoc um, the final thing that I will do in this video is I'll just show you if you got to the top where you where you probably have local machine written in if you just change local machine to simulator this is much in my, my opinion much better for testing an application because if you use the local machine it will if you're in Windows 8 it will take you into like a full screen mode of the application but if you have it in this view you can see it as if it were a tablet and also you can start to mess around with the uh, resolutions and you can see what happens when you change your resolution to something outrageous, how different it looks. And as you can see, when you change our resolution up to the uh, 2560 by 1440, you can see it's gone absolutely mad compared to down here when we're in the range of 100, uh, 1366 by 768. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on these. You can, especially with the ratios, keep an eye on what your ratios are at and one thing I will say is before you deploy an application, please go through all the resolutions and check that everything sits all right, because especially if you've got all sorts of things, because in the win in the um, Metro stuff, we can like use snap views and you can move these applications and you can kind of like snap them to the sides like this. And you can have like different um, amounts of snapped uh, view. You can have like half, a quarter, and I think they do three quarter now. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on because when you snap it like this, you can see this application has no margin control. And so it just sits itself halfway across as it as you'd expect it to. So, like I say, in the other video and in the next few tutorials, I will go through how to do all of this properly. And I'm hoping that this isn't too boring. So if it is a bit boring, let me know. I'll try and spice it up a little bit. But I'm just trying to uh, trying to make it how I wish I could have learned it because it took me a lot longer and a lot of headache going through to find the bits that are actually important when people rab it on like this about unimportant things. Yeah, it's not cool. So anyway, I'll teach you the uh, the essentials, guys. Get your applications going, and I'm sure we'll build some nice applications. Um, I guess I'll see you in the next video.